Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters and today we are going to talk more organic nomenclature. Seems that you can never have enough organic nomenclature. Uh, fun fact, they write books about this stuff and the organic nomenclature book is uh, fondly referred to as the blue book as opposed to the inorganic nomenclature book which is called the red book. But you won't strike those unless you go on and uh, do some serious chemistry in the coming years, and I hope you all do. So let's get stuck in and learn more about organic nomenclature, because last time we started talking about this whole concept of functional groups. And a functional group being a collection of a group of atoms that confer particular reactivity onto your molecule of interest, okay? And so we learned last time about alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. So that's enough to be going on with for the time being. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at some examples of naming these uh, types of molecules, plus some others as well. And um, let's see how far we get on this, because uh, it's always fun finding out how far in my notes I get through for any particular video. Right, let's kick off with this molecule here. And in fact, if I remember rightly, I think this is the first line structure we've drawn that has got a multiple bond in it, I think. So this multiple bond, uh, it's a double bond. So let's name this molecule, okay? And we can name this quite happily, even though we haven't seen necessarily double bonds before, we're going to name it using the rules that we have developed over the last couple of videos. We are going to use a prefix, a, an infix, and a suffix to name this particular molecule. Okay, so, Again, what's the first thing you do when you're naming anything? Longest carbon chain. Look for that and uh, name it. So therefore, what have we got? Not a heck of a lot of choice here. One, two, three. It's a three carbon chain, no matter which end you go from. So it is going to be meth eth prope. So we're going to have prope somewhere in the name. That is going to be our prefix. Now, our infix, this is the one that we haven't yet met. Now, all of our infixes so far have been A-N because all of the molecules that we've looked at so far have been alkanes or have not had multiple bonds in them. So here's our first example of a multiple bond in the longest carbon chain, that is. And so this is an alkene. This is a double bond. It's an alkene, and so therefore it gets the infix en, double bond en, remember single bond an, double bond en, and triple bond yn. Now, the suffix, the suffix, now remember in the list of suffixes I said uh, that the suffix denotes what type of functional group you've got if you've got one. Do we have a functional group here? Not really. Some people might call a double bond a functional group. Mm, yes, yeah, so I could go either way on that, but you would say that this essentially doesn't have a functional group, and if your molecule doesn't have a functional group, then you just put an E on the end. Okay? In the absence of an alcohol, or a carboxylic acid, or an aldehyde, or, car or, or whatever type of functional group you've got, you just stick an E on the end, and that is our molecule's name, prop or propene, okay? So that's nice and straightforward. Now, what would happen, <coughs> excuse me, what would happen if we lengthen that, that carbon chain by one? How would we go about naming that? And you might think, okay, well, heck, all that we've done is increase the carbon chain by one. We've gone from a prop to a butte, haven't we? Okay, and We've still got that same uh, unsaturation. We've got a double bond in our molecule, and if we've got a double bond, then we've got an EN, and then we have no functional group, essentially, and so we put an E on the end, and we might be tempted 
to call this molecule butene. Butene. And we'd be wrong if we did that because there's something in butene that wasn't present in propene. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> and it is the fact that this double bond is not unique. In other words, we could put a double bond here and would have a different molecule. Okay? We could put the double bond there, but we'd still have the same molecule. Okay, we'll look at that in a little bit. But the important thing is that the double bond can be in more than one position, and so therefore this name is ambiguous. Okay, we need to specify the position of the double bond. Now, uh, this is where regional differences rear their head. So a lot of people around the world call this one butene. Don't. Please, please, please don't. The whole point of having IUPAC, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, is to get everybody speaking the same chemical language, okay? So, particularly in North America, that molecule would be called 1-butene. Now, the rest of the world, that is what it was called 50 years ago. But it's changed since then, it's now called but one in. That is its official IUPAC name. Please, please, please learn it as that. And if your instructors tell you you're wrong, direct them to this video. <laughs> and I will quite happily tell them that no, not you. You're not the wrong ones, okay? So um, but one in in this case is the full name for that, okay? Prefix but. Now, this guy here, this is new. This is new, and this is sometimes called a locant, okay? And you can see the similarity between that word and location, okay? So that is specifying where the double bond is. And the double bond starts at carbon one, two, three, four. Now, again, this is all important because we could draw that molecule or sorry, we could number that molecule again from the other end, couldn't we? We could go one, two, three, four. But the rules say that you give the, in this case, functional group in air quotes, you've got to give it the lowest possible number, okay? So when you've got an alkene or an alkyne and nothing else, then you have got to give those, in the longest carbon chain, you've got to give those the lowest possible number. So you need to number the carbon chain so that this gets the lowest possible number. So the double bond in this case runs between carbon one and carbon two. So we're going to say that it starts at carbon one. In this case, in the blue case, the double bond runs between carbon three and carbon four. It starts at carbon three versus starting at carbon one. The red one is correct. And so therefore we would call this butte one in. Okay, if we were to change the position of the double bond and put it there, then, you know, that's a relatively uh, simple change that we've made. And all that we've done is move the start of the double bond from carbon one to carbon two. And so therefore we would call that butte two in. Okay, now <laughs> there's more about uh, butene than, is, uh, than, than we're going to talk about today. We will talk about it in the future, but um, for the moment, that's the name that we're going to call this. We're going to call that butene. Okay, so we're happy with that. Um, let's then go to... Uh, okay, so let's go to this molecule here and name that. Okay, so again, this is all about functional groups, as we're going to see. So 
Before we get to functional groups, again, the first thing that you do, you make sure that you find that longest carbon chain. So longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. So that means that we are going to have pent somewhere in the name, aren't we? So the prefix in this case is going to be pent. Okay. Um, do we have any multiple bonds in the longest carbon chain? No, we do not. And so therefore the infix becomes an. And then finally, what is our functional group. Our functional group in this case is a carboxylic acid, COOH. Now we saw that in the last video, okay? And we also saw in the last video that when we have a carboxylic acid, our suffix is oic acid. Pent and oic acid. Two words, just in case that, <laughs> I haven't made that quite clear there. Pent and oic Acid. There we go. Okay. Nice and fairly straightforward. Um, do we need a locant here? Do we need to say where the carboxylic acid is? And the answer is no. And normally if this was a lecture, I would say why? And then you would answer, but because <laughs> we're in the video age, um, I'll just assume that you're busy yelling the right answer at me. The right answer being that a carboxylic acid can only be on the end of a carbon chain. So there is absolutely no ambiguity as to where to place COOH, a carboxylic acid group. It's got to go either here or it's got to go there, in which case it's the same thing. It's on the end of the chain and it's going to be numbered as carbon one, either end. So... Quite straightforward, pentanoic acid. Now, what happens if we add a substituent? Where do we go from here? So, we've added a substituent. What's our longest carbon chain? One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, same thing. Same thing. So that makes no difference. So we know it's going to be pent, dull. <laughs> we know it's going to be pent. Again, you haven't got any multiple bonds in your longest carbon chain, so it's going to be pent an. And your functional group is a carboxylic acid, so it's going to be pent anoic acid. So that's the guts of it. And then remember, if we've got any substituents, we've got to say A what is the substituent, and B, where is the substituent? So what is the substituent? It is a methyl group, okay? And again, remember, it doesn't matter if you are choosing that as being your longest carbon chain or that as being your longest carbon chain. It's still a methyl group, regardless of which one. And it's still in the same position on the longest carbon chain, regardless of which way you go. So it's a methyl group. And, right, so let's number this um, molecule, okay? Let's number the longest carbon chain. We could go one, two, three, four, five. Or we could go one, two, three, four, five. Now, <laughs> I told you in an earlier video that you must number molecules so as to give the substituents the lowest possible number. And I was telling the truth. But here it might look that I look as though I wasn't. Because you might think, okay, in red, the substituent is given number two. In blue, the substituent is given number four. So surely the red is the correct numbering of this. Nope. No, it's not. And the reason it's not is... <laughs> Perhaps I didn't give you the full sentence. In the absence of functional groups, you number the carbon chain to give the substituents the lowest number. So these were the examples we were using for alkanes where we didn't have functional groups. Now we have functional groups. The functional groups must always be numbered the, as the lowest number. Okay? So in actual fact... 
the numbering that we're going to use is the blue numbering because the blue numbering gives COOH the lowest number. It gives the functional group carbon the lowest number, carbon one. So therefore, this molecule is going to be 4-methyl pentanoic acid. Not, as you might expect, 2-methyl pentanoic acid. Okay? So, that's an example. Um, let's have another, or a quick look at another similar one. Rub those, oh heck. Let's just, <laughs> let's just draw it again because it's quicker. The beauties of line structures. There we go. C-O-O-H, and we are going to now do that. Okay, so what's the name of this? Well, again, remember repetition, repetition. It's the way to learn, going over things and over things and over things again. So we've got a very, very similar thing here. One, two, three, four, five. It's five carbons, so it's going to be pent. But now... Do we have double or triple bonds, multiple type bonds in the longest carbon chain? And hell yes, we do, okay? We've got a double bond here. So we need to say, yes, we have a double bond. And we also need to say, where is that double bond? Because it matters. It could be there or there or there or there. They would all be different compounds. Well, actually, it couldn't be there, but we'll get into that later. So there are a number of possible ambiguities here if we're just going to call it pentenoic acid. We have to say where the ene is. Again, in terms of numbering, you give the functional group the lowest possible number. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And this is where alkenes and alkynes do not count as functional groups. A carboxylic acid does. That's carbon one. So therefore, carbon two here, carbon three. So your double bond starts at carbon three. So pent three in. Okay, there's your locant. There is your infix and your suffix oic acid. Pent three in oic acid. Cool. <laughs> You can see that these names get quite big quite quickly, okay? Um, so, again, as per usual, I've got through way, way, way less than I thought I was going to today. So it looks like we are going to continue this on in the next video. Otherwise, this video becomes of unmanageable length, okay? So we're going to end it here. You can go off and get a cup of coffee or something like that before you hook into the next video. So I will see you there. Bye.